Hello everyone, and welcome back to Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and today we're going to be going over a game between Jeffrey Zhang and Ray Robson from the 2019 Spring Chess Classic. Of course, the Spring Chess Classic is coming up once again here in 2020. Uh, perhaps it's already going on by the time this video airs. And so we're going to be taking a look at the winner from last year, Jeffrey Zhang, managed to win that tournament. And we're going to see how he fared against the one and only Ray Robson. Uh, the game started with knight f3, d5, d4, knight f6, and now after c4, c6, we have a Slav by transposition. Now there are a lot of haters out there that say white shouldn't play c takes d5, because the exchange Slav is notorious for being uh, prone to draws. Uh, there's some, some real equality going on here, and it can be difficult to kind of try and prove an advantage, try and win the game once you uh, take this d5 pawn. The structure is just going to be very symmetrical. Black shouldn't really have any problems developing his pieces, and so it'll be difficult to win. However, as we'll see, Jeffrey managed to prove something in this game. Both sides started with very natural development, bishop f4. Now black takes the time to play this a6 move, White plays rook c1, getting this rook to the open file quite early on. And now, since white hasn't applied too much pressure in the opening, black is totally safe to develop this bishop out to f5. Uh, of course, the only downside to this move in openings like the Slav is sometimes this b7 pawn can end up just a little bit weak. So you have to be a little bit careful of this. In the game, though, Jeffrey first started with e3. Black plays e6. And now, uh, Jeffrey does actually go for this queen b3 move, putting some annoying pressure on b7. And now, there's a couple ways that uh, black has responded to this historically. Uh, one funny looking move is the move rook a7. This is actually a pretty common move in the Slav to defend this uh, b7 pawn. The rook looks out of place on, b on a7, but you can imagine someday this pawn might come to b5, and the rook can easily swing over to some better squares on the c file. Also playable for black is this move bishop d6, when you get a pretty interesting line after queen takes b7, where black is going to be playing knight a5, and uh-oh, it looks like you've trapped your queen. But no need for concern, uh, this has been played before, and this is actually a queen sacrifice by white in this case. So this is one to look out for if you're playing with the white pieces, uh, perhaps add that one to your book of tricks. But in the game, uh, Ray actually did none of the above, instead choosing knight h5, uh, attacking this bishop. And here it's actually totally fine for white to take this uh, b7 pawn, because now the bishop and the queen together control c7. Uh, but in this case, Jeffrey opted for something else, simply playing bishop e5. Uh, Ray hits this bishop with f6, and takes this bishop off the board with knight takes g3. And this was the point of, of Ray's play here. He just wanted to get rid of this dark squared bishop. Uh, white captures this knight with h takes g3, opening up this h file, and now uh, white is actually making a threat in this position. You, you wouldn't really expect it from the, the opening here, but white actually has a pretty serious threat. So black is not able to just develop naturally. If you do this, you're going to run into this move, knight h4. When this bishop has no squares to go to on this diagonal, uh, it has to come to g4. Of course, if it comes to g6, knight takes g6 is going to win a piece. And after bishop g4, knight g6 is already going to be crushing black's position here. Rook g8 is forced, and now for one, this pawn is hanging. For two, white can also bring this knight to a very nice square on f4, when there's pretty serious threats to black's center. So black has to do something about this knight h4 threat. He cannot develop naturally. There's a few things you can do. Uh, in the game, Ray chose bishop g6, but he actually ended up under a little bit of pressure, and I think a better move for Ray might be this g5 idea. It permanently shuts out this knight h4 plan, and it kind of locks these two pawns on, on these squares where they're going to remain doubled. We'll see in the game, Jeffrey was able to fix his pawn structure, and I think g5 would have been a nice way to keep these pawns where they stand. Instead, we saw bishop g6. Now, knight h4 is a good move from Jeffrey, this bishop drops back to f7, and now, of course, by removing this bishop from this nice diagonal, white has regained the ability to develop, its, uh, to develop his bishop to its most natural square on d3. Black plays the very nice f5, trying to lock this bishop out of the game, and then I'll let you try and find Jeffrey's uh, crushing positional move here. Uh, there's one move that kind of stands out above the rest that solves a lot of white's problems. 
All right, hopefully you found it uh, at home there. The move is, of course, G4. Fixing uh, White's pawn structure by pressuring this F5 pawn. Of course, it would be a huge mistake to take this pawn, because knight g6 is going to come through with devastating effect once again. You can take this knight, but after the check, this pin is too much. If you move this king up, you're going to get crushed on the queen's side. Uh, so you cannot take, you cannot ignore it, because we've made a pretty serious threat here. Uh, so in the game, Ray chose g6. However, this isn't the most combative line. Probably what Ray thought he could do here is play the move bishop e7. And at first glance, this looks like it works for black. You're hitting this knight. White does not have time to simply take this pawn because he'll lose a piece. But in this case, uh, g takes f5 is a very, very good sacrifice for white. Black does go up the piece, but after we take on e6, take on e6, take on b7, this knight is hanging, this pawn is hanging, and Jeffrey is getting an astounding one, two, three pawns for the piece, and a fourth pawn to follow quite quickly with this h7 pawn. It is not long for this world, even if white doesn't take it immediately. So bishop e7 does not get the job done either. That's why Ray had to go for this slightly weird looking uh, g6 move. Now after g takes f5, Ray captures back with the e pawn, and now this bishop is going to be forever sad on the f7 square. Not much future for this bishop. Uh, in the game, uh, Jeffrey simply reroutes this knight back through f3, and Ray finishes development with bishop d6. We see castles and castles. Now in the game, uh, Jeffrey tried to reroute this knight back from e2, perhaps into some squares on f4 on the king's side. Uh, perhaps a bit better for white is actually to keep playing on the queen's side here. He has a little bit of a lead in development with uh, this rook, and perhaps playing on the queen's side like this was better. Uh, 92 though was nice to uh, stop this f4 idea. Now Ray plays on the queen's side with knight a5. We see queen d1, and then some strange maneuvering was done in the game. When after queen f6, Jeffrey brings this queen back up to a4, highlighting that this queen on d8 was covering some important squares. Black simply plays knight c4, and now Jeffrey once again moves the queen uh, back to c2, putting pressure on this knight, and trying to uh, make some uh, headway on this c file with some b3 threats. Knight a5 was black's choice, and now Jeffrey plays a very, very interesting positional sacrifice here. Um, I'll ask you at home, see if you can point out uh, black's best minor piece. There's one minor piece for black that really holds everything together, and white's position would be much, much better if it were gone. Uh, of course, the piece I'm talking about is this bishop on d6. This bishop is the problem piece for white. It's stopping all of his entry on the c-file. It's guarding all of these squares, making threats with f4, and preventing these knights from getting to their most natural squares. Of course, this bishop is the piece that is the problem for Jeffrey. And so it makes sense here that Jeffrey plays knight e5 with impunity, uh, offering up a full pawn sacrifice to black here in exchange for getting rid of this bishop on d6. Uh, black plays bishop takes e5, we see d takes e5, queen takes e5, and now of course the c7 square is ripe for the taking and Jeffrey does take it with queen c7. Uh, black has to take this queen, we see rook takes c7, of course, the queen was attacking this knight as well. And now Ray perhaps makes a bit of a mistake. Uh, probably best for Ray was to simply defend this pawn, which gives him the time he needs to move this knight off of a5 onto the better square, c4. In the game, though, we saw rook c8. Jeffrey responds, of course, with rook c1, keeping control of the c-file. We saw takes and takes. And now, uh, Ray actually went in for the positional uh, sacrifice himself, d4, offering up the d-pawn in exchange for opening up this bishop and allowing this bishop to uh, take on a2. So we see knight takes d4, bishop takes a2, and then uh, this gives, Ray, or gives Jeffrey the opportunity to regain his pawn with a move that you probably see for yourself, b4, removing the defender of the b7 pawn. Uh, Ray brings this knight back to c6, and now Jeffrey simply captures and captures. And now after a5, uh, saving this pawn from, from capture between the two white pieces, uh, Jeffrey actually has a very, very nice endgame here. In fact, it might be uh, technically winning. 
Uh, of course, that endgame is not after the bad move. Uh, B takes A5, trading off pawns, but after B5. And when uh, this pawn becomes passed, it's very difficult to actually stop this pawn from simply running all the way up the board and becoming a queen. Uh, Black plays A4 here, trying to create counter threats with his own pawn, but simply B6, and this pawn is difficult to stop. Uh, Ray tried rook b8, getting in front of the pawn, but now the nice move bishop a6 comes through. White is already threatening to trade the rooks and promote. Uh, in the game, black went with king g7, uh, trying to prevent rook c8 from coming with check. So of course now this could be countered with rook takes b6, but now after b7, it's impossible to stop white from uh, winning material here. Ray tried bishop d5. Now rook c8 would be winning the game, rook c7 would be winning the game, and Jeffrey's move as well also wins the game. We see rook c5. Uh, you cannot take on b7 because rook c7 check wins a full piece. Instead we saw bishop e6, and only now Jeffrey plays rook to c8. And Ray goes in for the simplified endgame where he's simply down a piece. But this endgame is not as easy as you might uh, think here. This A pawn is passed, and it's very far away from the king's side pawns. And so after king f6, Jeffrey has to devote his bishop entirely to uh, stopping this pawn. Uh, we see f4, king f2 from Jeffrey, uh, and this is good play so far. He's doing the best he can to keep the black king boxed out. Now a3, bishop c4, and we see the problem for white here. Uh, it's true that he's up a full piece for a pawn, but this bishop is going to have to be totally locked to the, the queen side here, preventing this pawn from, from queening. There's no comfortable way for white to bring the king over to win this pawn, because then black has time to trade off all of the king's side pawns with a draw. So in the game, black tries h5. This is a, a pretty good at drawing attempt. You want to get these pawns up the board and trade off all of white's remaining pawns, and this is the way black can try to draw the game. Uh, Jeffrey went for e takes f4 check, king takes f4, g3 check, king f5, bishop a2, g5. In the game we see king e3, and now black plays king e5. And this is a very tricky idea for black here. Um, now, there's actually only one move that maintains the win for Jeffrey Zhang here. I'll let you at home try and find it, see if you can pick out the only winning move, uh, okay? Hopefully you found it at home. Of course, it is not f4 check, that move draws. It is not g4, that move draws. It is not passing, that move draws. It is, of course, bishop b1. You need to cut this king off from coming to the king's side, and now you can easily win this game. Um, the, what's the problem with f4, I hear you asking at home? Well, of course, black's simply going to take this pawn, bring this king to f5, and now he can use this h-pawn as a decoy, drawing your king away from the defense of the f-pawn, and black will be able to take your final pawn. If you play bishop b1 check now, black does not step backwards with a losing position, but instead steps forwards. And now, it's true that you can advance over here, but black is going to advance on the king's side, and this, like I said, is simply going to be a draw. In fact, if white isn't careful, he might lose this game. King e3 is now actually required for white to be able to catch this pawn. So that's why the other moves are not good enough. This h4 threat by black is pretty strong, but bishop b1 is enough, and now h4 does not get the job done. White can simply capture this, play f4 check, and what's the difference here? Well, the black king isn't able to come to g4, isn't able to keep the pressure on this f-pawn, and white can simply collect this uh, comfortably. In the game, black did not try h4, Ray chose king f6 instead, trying to keep his chances alive, but now it's, it's much easier for Jeffrey to follow through, simply king e4, and after some bishop uh, maneuvering, wasting tempi, uh, the white king is able to invade, and after bishop a2, Ray went ahead and resigned here. Of course, after h4, um, white is simply collecting this pawn. And with the extra bishop, uh, king and pawn endgames are always going to be winning. In fact, maybe I'll show it for you just for fun. Of course, the idea is, one, you can waste tempi with the bishop, and two, the bishop actually controls some key squares here. And the pawn easily promotes in this endgame. 
Uh, a very nice game by Jeffrey Zhang here, showing uh, some real opening understanding, using this g4 idea, using these sacrificial ideas and the threats on b7 to improve his position. And then in this endgame, some very nice play, uh, pushing this pawn forward, gaining the material, and then ensuring that with this extra bishop, keeps the black king out of play, keeps pawns on the boards, and converts for the full point. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and I will see you next time.